Hey guys, welcome to the third and final part of the koi fish painting. As you can see, it is freezing in Manchester. It's been snowing all night. There is snow everywhere. It looks so pretty. Um, in this final part, we're going to do a quick time lapse of the rest of the fish. And then we'll go into painting the lilies, the water drops on the lilies and the bubbles surrounding the lilies. And then after that, we go to the final stage, which is the glazing with oils. Um, your picture's going to look amazing after this. Oh, there's a doggy. Don't eat yellow snow. Don't forget to give a good thumbs up, uh, hit that red subscribe button, and share this video if you like to. Um, so let's get started. So grab your cup of tea. I almost said toothbrush. I don't know why. Grab a tea, grab a brush and let's get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share or else. Ew. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share or else. <laughs> oh, I'm hysterical. Hush. Okay, now we're going to paint the water lilies. Uh, I'm going to mix some green, so I'm going to take some yellow. A little bit of blue. And make it nice green. I also have some Liquitex Heavy Body Bright Aqua Green, which I'm going to see what this looks like. It's a little bright, but I might be able to use its colors.
Non ce la fai. Gonna lay the colors down. The painting the lilies does not have to be neat. I'm just gonna get a base green on it. That needs to be a bit neat as your edges. Go for a little dark green on the edges. Just touching it again, like I did with the fish. Just touches. Dabbing it, just adding splashes of color around. Let's try this back real quick, just take a little bit. Bit bright, but maybe just a few little highlights here and there. And just gently blend it into the rest, just to give it a little bit of color. I've been using the uh, filbert number six. Now I'm going to the filbert number two. 
I'm going to take my lightest green. I'm going to use it to highlight the edges. These gentle strokes. Just to make a little line around. Doesn't have to be a neat line. Take a dark red, just a little bit. I'm just gonna put some gently, hardly touching the canvas. Put some bits of red into it. And the edges. And just take a dry brush. too quickly. I'm just go over it with green if it doesn't look right. Taking a very very small amounts of paint, hardly any, just so it's like a dry brush. Okay, I'm just going to grab a bit of dark leaf. Uh, darkest green and I'm just going to make that a little blended in. Okay, I'm take some lightest green. I'm just going to add a couple of highlights around. I'm going to make a little parts of it a little lighter. I don't know, this just says Senator. Just a really, really thin line of brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white. I'm just going to highlight pieces right on the rim there. Just wet it a bit. Just wet it a 
bit of water will make your paint flow a little better. I'm hardly touching, I'm not doing the entire line, I'm just letting the brush scrape across and wherever the paint comes off, that's where it comes off. think. Step away to have a look to see if you like it. I think I like that. I think that's right. Now we're going to paint the water drop. It's usually in lilies that you always sometimes find water drops inside the lilies. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make our dark green a little darker by adding a little bit of black to it. we want to use. So if you've done your lilies in a different colour, then whatever your dark colour is on that lily, just darken it a little bit more. I'm just going to draw. I'm going to decide where my light is coming from. I'm just going to put it on this side. So my light is coming. I'm going to say my light's coming from the top down. So my darkest side will be towards the light. I'm just going to draw in gently a nice almost oval shape. Rinse my brush. I'm going to take a bit of white on the opposite side. I'm going to draw in the same. from your brush to blend it in. If there's too much paint you'll just keep covering up the green and we don't want that.
I'm going to take my dark green again. I'm just going to put a little shadow behind the white. I'm just adding it gently, just so we build it up slowly, so that I don't put too much, and then have to repaint the lily. Blend that in nicely. What I want is a little bit more white on the white side. I'm just taking a little bit more paint on my brush. Just going to highlight that a little bit more. Excess off and blend it in. A dark green just to sharpen things up a little. Get a smaller brush. Go for my liner brush. There's quite a bit of water on it. Just outlining it. And then where the shadow is, just gently blend it in. Blend it in 
just on this side. Now what you can do is you can put a few bubbles around the lily if you want. Um, let, let's try that. If it doesn't work, we'll, have to, we'll paint it out. I've not done this before. So let's give that a go. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to make sure it's quite watered down. Only because I need it to be very smooth if I'm going to draw circles. just big circles, little circles and then tiny circles and this is just to give the effect of water. We can stick around here a couple larger ones Now we need to add the highlights and shadows inside these circles. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and the same side where I put my bright tie actually. Let's go a little darker first before we do the highlights. So I'm just going to take, because the water's there, I'm just going to do it in, let's see, I'm going to glaze the rocks in green. So I think the bubbles should have a bit of green in them. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my dark green, water down. into the bubble. Not 
liquid in very much. You can hardly see it, but if you don't do it, your eye won't believe it's real. And these tiny little details, even though you won't notice them that much, they do make a lot of difference. <coughs> Touch of white and highlight it. Just put a little highlight in the circles. outlining the back of it again just so that my highlight and the reflection and the I think it's called refraction There we go. Now you see that green we added mixed slightly into little highlights which made it look a bit more realistic. Which I really like. You probably won't be able to tell on the camera, but it is there. And these are the little things that will make your painting pop. <clears throat> okay, so go ahead and paint the rest of your water lilies and we'll meet back here for the oil glazing Okay, so what you've just seen me do before, I was turning the canvas around, I was painting the edges white. I prefer my edges white. Um, some people like to paint the colour that they're painting on the picture on the sides and have the edges um, all painted. I prefer them white because to me I'm just going to hang this like it is and to me the white is my frame. So I like a brilliant white so I go around it a couple of times with acrylic paint before I do my oils. You can paint oils over acrylic. You can't paint acrylic over oils. Remember that, because then your acrylic will just peel straight off. Okay, so <clears throat> I've never used these oils before. These are water mixable oils, uh, Georgian. This is the introduction set. Um, I've just got a cheap set just to try it out. And what I've done is I've laid them all out on my tear away canvas, which is just like a piece of paper. Um, I'll tell you what I've got now. I have titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow hue, red cadmium hue, crimson alizarian hue, corillium hue, French ultramarine, viridium hue, yellow ochre, and burnt umber. These all match the colors that's over there. I just put them all out because I'm not sure what colors I want to use. Um, over here, you see this blob of gooey juice. This is liquid. Liquid speeds the drying of oils. It improves the gloss as well. 
I'm not worried about the gloss because I'm going to be varnishing the entire thing afterwards. I'll do a quick video uh, on my next video. I'll do a quick tutorial on how I varnish it. Um, Liquin, I discovered recently, is the best thing ever, especially if you're using oils. If you paint with oils, this will stay wet for two weeks. If you add this to the oil and you do a glaze, or if you paint it thick, you add a little bit more, it should dry within a couple of days. This, as a glaze today, what I'm gonna do, will be dry by tomorrow morning. And then I can go over and put another layer if I choose to do so, which is so good. I love this stuff. So I'm gonna start with my rocks. And I'm going to glaze a bit of browns, black, I don't know, black. Huh. What oil set doesn't give you black? That's a bit rubbish. Okay, we'll have to try and make a black. Huh, I'll have to look that up. Okay, that's weird. Well, right, okay, anyway. Uh, browns, blacks, and a bit of greens into it, just to make it look like it's a pond. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your brush. You can use a palette knife if you wish. I'm not using a palette knife because it's just, I'm using so little. If I was using more paint, then I would use a palette knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the yellow ochre. Just a, I'm going to take a bit of the liquid, put it down, a bit of the yellow ochre, and mix them together. Makes it a nice runny colour. The more liquid you use, the more see-through it will be. Now, I don't want a lot, I just want a glaze. It nice and clear so that when I put it on it doesn't take away the acrylic paint that we've just done. I'm going to take off my brush and I'm just going to pick up a little bit and I'm going to test it first. So I want a bit of brown over there. So I'm just going to rub it in, gently rub it, just to give it colours. Try avoid your white. Add a bit of green, some liquid, touch of green, wipe off the excess. So this water solute, uh, this water mixable oil is supposed to wash your brush with water and washing up liquid. You don't need white spirits or any other stuff to clean it. I just want to add a bit of green to it. Just rub them together. And 
kayak This is a Terry Harrison special effects brush. What I'm using over here is a fill dirt number six. Now the special effects brush I'm just gonna use to blend it. With oils, it's so it's it, it blends really well. I'm just going around in circles, mixing the yellow ochre into the viridian hue green Yeah, I quite like that. Look. I'm just rinsing my brush to see if this works. Well, there's still quite a bit of paint on it. Does come off. So basically, you just choose your colors, you glaze whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to talk you through all the glazing. When we come to the white, I'll slow down, but the rest of the thing is I'm just going to be adding bits of color here and there. So you can do whatever you like with your painting. If you're doing bright pink rocks, then you also be pink. Um, so until we get there, hang on, let me see if I can do the black. Let's add a bit of... Okay, I actually to go and do some research because I've never had to make black before. So I've taken a bit of blue, a bit of red, and a bit of yellow. And you mix them all together and you get black. It's not the strongest of blacks I've seen, but it will have to do. You can see it's not, it's, it's, it's okay, it's a good black. I mean, diluting it down will make it a, a little lighter. I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid to it. Okay. So I'm just going to take some black. And where my black is over there, I'm just going to put a little bit over there on it. Oops, gone a bit of the tail. Be careful with it. So I'm just going to cover my black. And then I'm going to blend it into the rock a bit. Just to make it look like the rock is deeper down. Off the tail. There we go. 
I'm just blending it into the rock. You can still see the line of the rock. But it's going into the background. We can do the same thing with the darker rocks. If you don't want to see too much of the line, just go over it again, a little bit darker. You can always do that tomorrow when it's dry. God, be careful. I keep getting it. What I'm doing if I'm getting a bit on my white is I'm licking my finger and I'm just pushing it off. Because I'm a bit careless. While I'm going around, I'm just doing the other rocks as well. Just, or else I might forget and then I'll notice it once I've varnished it and then it's too late. There we have it. So, go ahead and do all your rocks in whatever colour you choose. Try and get them a nice blend. And also, just to let you know, I've given up on washing my brush with water. It's driving me mad. Because every time I need to change color, I have to get up, go to the basin, wash it, and then I'm done. So I've gone and stuck a bit of white spirits in this glass. Maybe because I'm switching between colors. Okay, so I let this dry overnight and all my oil paints are all dry, completely dry. And that's because I used the liquid. So all this has dried as well. 
on my palette so I had to remix my black because I'm going to be using a bit more black and I'm going to be using some white now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the shadows of the fish on the rocks. I'm not going to do them very dark, I just want them to be like a hint of a shadow. Uh, for the shadow of the fish I need to look at where I've done the shadows of my bubbles. So they're on this side, so I'm going to put the same shadow for the fish on that side, like over there, and just behind and on the side over there. Um, <coughs> to make the shadow of the fish, you just follow the form of the fish, depending on where the fish is. This fish is quite high up, so the shadow will be a little bit further away from it. Whereas this fish is quite low and so is that one, so the shadow will be quite close to the outline of the fish itself. After that, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to highlight my fish. So where my little whiskers are, I'm just going to paint them back in. Put some highlights on the fins, a little bit of a highlight on the heads, you know, on the top of the dorsal fin, the anal fin, you know, just highlight it all a little bit. Put a couple of highlights on my bubbles just to make them pop a bit. And then, what I'm going to do is, I've been thinking about this overnight. This fish, to me, looks like it's coming out of the water, and so does this one. So I was thinking of drawing some water ripples around the fish, which means I'll need to darken just a little bit of his body, just to make it look like it's underwater. Now, <clears throat> instead of painting this directly on a canvas, I took this into my digital painting software, which is Clip Studio Paint. I took a photo of this, brought it in, and I drew my circles just to see what it would look like. And I think it will work, so I'm going to attempt it. Good thing about the oil is if you put it down and you don't like it, you can pretty much take it off. So we'll give that a go and see how it, what happens. So with the whites, I'm just going to take a bit of my liquid and some white. Remember, it's just a glaze. We don't want to cover up what we've already painted. So it needs to be quite watered down with the liquid. So a bit transparent. But not as transparent as we do the black because we want it to stand out a bit more. So I'm just going to highlight, you know, the whiskers. Just give them a little flick. And on the fins. A little flick at the end. Just to give him that little plan off. just to give it so it's not so round. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but it's just tiny little hints. the highlights on this head, just touching it like we did when we originally painted it, a little bit on the white parts, the orange parts,
and a little bit to highlight the top of his eyes. Just to make them stand out a little more. This is also a very good way to clean up your edges. I didn't prepare this canvas very well. What I should have done was use a bit of gesso just to make the canvas a bit smoother. Which I'll probably do in my next picture. Only because when you're painting fine details like this, the canvas is not very smooth. You don't get the best of blends and your edges are a bit untidy because it's very rough. I don't want to do too much to the fish and then I overdo it. There comes a time when you need to decide where to stop. Because you can just carry on and keep going and keep going and then it just never ends and then you can overdo your picture and then it's totally ruined. Yeah, so do that to all your fish, highlight them up. 
Um, I'm just going to show you the shadows. Take a little bit of more liquid just to water down this black a little bit. So I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, so the shadow of the fish. I'm going to shadow my bubbles on this side, so I'm going to do the shadow of my fish this side. This one's quite close to the ground, so I'm just going to draw circle. Just follow his body. Just watch where I stick my arm on this fish. Might be best to wait till the white is dry. I'm not doing them sharp lines. I'm just going to use my uh, <coughs> special specs brush and I'm just going to smudge it a little bit. I really don't want these shadows to be so prominent. It's just if they're not there, something in your brain is going to go, uh oh, there's something wrong there. And doing the shadows will help it look a bit more realistic. Just blur the edges a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so go do your shadows, do your highlights. You can also add a couple of highlights to your rocks if you like, like where there's a little bit of white, you can just touch it up a little bit. I'm just going to leave my rocks the way they are because I quite like them. And then we'll come back and we'll attempt the water ripples. Okay, so what you see me doing here is I'm just painting 
like half a semicircle. I'm not painting a full circle around, just little bits of it. I'm also doing it to the other fish, but I'm putting two little strokes in front of his face just to show like there's a bit of water movement where he's coming up. If you make a mistake, just wet your tissue with a little bit of uh, white spirits and just rub it out. And then dry it and then paint again. Just adding some around the lilies just to give a bit of movement. And here I'm just smudging it. I'm using a dry brush and I'm smudging the oil paint with the, the dry brush just so it's not so sharp. I mix the titanium white with a lot of liquid just to make it move uh, smoothly and be transparent. Now I'm just adding some highlights to the water, just little spots here and there of bright, uh, brilliant white, just so it stands out a bit, so it looks like it's reflecting the light. Now I'm mixing down the, uh, some blue, but it's really, really watered down with some liquid, just to give shadow behind the first circle on the fish's head, just to make it look like it's coming out of the water. And the head, I'm putting a little bit of white just to make it brighter. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe if you haven't done so, share it, and stay tuned for some more tutorials. If there's anything you would like painting, please drop me a line in the comments. Thank you and see you soon.